Top 10 Deadliest Pirates to Ever Sail the Seven Seas Number 10. Black Bart Bartholomew Roberts was born in 1682 in Pembrokeshire, Wales. He began his maritime career as a sailor following in his ship carpenter father's footsteps. But he wouldn't be able to follow in those footsteps for long because in 1719 Roberts was captured by pirates while serving on a slave ship. And since being a free pirate is better than being a dead slave, he joined their crew and began his career as a buccaneer. In one battle, their captain was killed, so Roberts took it upon himself to be the new captain, becoming a formidable and notorious pirate. Roberts operated primarily in the Atlantic and Caribbean, capturing hundreds of ships and amassing significant wealth. His ship, the Royal Fortune alone, served as a symbol of Robert's power, and Roberts must have been a Tengen fan because he was also known for his flamboyant style, often wearing fine clothing and flying the Jolly Roger. To gain his notoriety, he used intimidation and violent tactics, instilling fear among merchants and sailors. While Roberts wasn't known for extreme cruelty compared to other pirates, his attacks were still ruthless, involving violent confrontations and sometimes the execution of prisoners who disagreed with him. He was even even gangster enough to leave a lasting impact on maritime trade during this time. But sadly, all great adventures have to come to an end where his ended in 1722 during a naval battle with the British warship Swallow off the coast of Africa. And just like his captain before him, he was killed in the confrontation and was buried at sea. Number 9. Jean Lafitte don't let the name fool you, because even though he's a baguette-eating, white flag-waving, wine-drinking Frenchman, he would still become one of the deadliest pirates to ever exist. Jean Lafitte was a French pirate and privateer born around 1780, likely in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And I say likely because no one in his crew had the courtesy to ask him where he was born. I swear, some pirates just don't have class. He moved to New Orleans in the early 1800s and initially worked as a blacksmith and trader. During the War of 1812, Lafitte its French genes started to take control and he began to scheme. His master plan was to become a privateer, capture enemy ships, and establish a smuggling operation with his brother Pierre. You know, a wise man once told me if birds can evolve to fly, then evil can evolve to soar. I'm not gonna say the name of this wise man though. Because over time, Lafitte got bored of smuggling and transitioned into outright piracy, primarily targeting Spanish ships and trading routes, allowing him to become a notorious figure in the Gulf of Mexico. Operating from Barataria Bay, Louisiana, Lafitte led a network of smugglers and pirates engaging in the capture of valuable cargo and selling stolen goods in New Orleans, amassing significant wealth. His reputation was marked by various violent and ruthless acts, including of course raids on ships and coastal towns, which resulted in loss of life and property. Lafitte was also implicated into the illegal slave trade, contributing to the suffering of many people. Not only is he doing evil, he's doing it hey illegally. Guys. He was truly only focused on the bread. And despite his criminal activities, Lafitte played a significant role in the Battle of New Orleans in 1815, aiding American forces against the British and receiving a pardon from the US government in return. See guys, it's always been this way. As long as you're friends with the US of A, then you can do all the evil things you want. After the war, Lafitte's piracy diminished and he moved to Galveston, Texas, where he continued trading and privateering but eventually withdrew from the pirate life. Though his exact fate is unclear, he reportedly died in 1823 in the waters off the coast of Mexico. Number 8. Edward Lowe He was born around 1690 in Westminster, and like most pirates, Lowe began his pirate career after initially serving on a privateer ship, which was just a legally sanctioned pirate vessel during wartime. I probably should have defined that earlier. Anyway, after the war ended, many privateers turned to piracy and Lowe followed suit. He eventually captained a ship called the Ranger, recruiting hey a crew of hardened criminals. Lowe became notorious for his brutality and cunning, targeting merchant vessels along the American coast and in the Caribbean. He was infamous for torturing his victims and using extreme measures to intimidate and extract information. Accounts describe him committing acts of cruelty such as hanging captives from the rigging or setting them adrift. His reputation for violence included burning ships and torturing crew members, and he was also known to kill indiscriminately, showcasing a level of sadism that rightfully scared many people. On many occasions, he taunted colonial authorities and boasted about his deeds, but the Navy would capture him in 1724, where he managed to escape later on. And it was from this moment on where the rest of his life became a mystery. Some say he might have continued to pirate in obscurity, or he might have died at sea. Other accounts suggest he may have settled down to a quiet life, but concrete evidence is lacking, so I guess we'll never know. 
Number 7. William Fly William Fly was an English pirate active in the early 18th century, born around 1685 in England. Little is known about his early life, but he's likely come from a modest background. Fly's transition to piracy occurred during a time when many soldiers turned to piracy due to economic hardships, such as lack of work or low wages in legitimate maritime trades. And I guess soldiers just had a heart since forever ago. Anyway, Fly began his piracy in the Caribbean and off the American coast, engaging in attacking merchant ships, stealing cargo, and terrorizing coastal towns. His crew was known for their brutality, often resorting to violence against captives. Fly was eventually captured in 1726 after a series of raids when his pirate ship The Fancy was overtaken by naval forces. He became notorious for his defiance against authorities, famously refusing to repent for his actions when captured. Funny that his name is Fly since all he would do after death is fall. He was tried for piracy in Boston, where he claimed piracy was a noble pursuit and expressed pride with his actions. And I feel like everyone in the courtroom just looked at each other and thought it was such a noble pursuit that they hung him for it, where he would die on July 12, 1726. With even his final words showing no remorse for his life as a pirate, he really stood on business before standing on business was even a thing. Number 6. Calico Jack with probably one of the coolest pirate names I have ever heard, Calico Jack, born Jack Rackham around 1682, was an English pirate known for his colorful clothing and flamboyant personality. Where his name, Calico Jack, comes from the calico fabric of his clothes. I guess being a pirate also means you need to go to beauty pageants too. He became a pirate during the golden age of piracy, which spanned the late 17th and early 18th centuries. Rackham likely began his career in piracy under the infamous pirate Charles Vane. But that wouldn't last long because who do you think we're dealing with? The Golden Girls? Rackham took command of a small pirate ship, the William, after mutiny against Vane in 1718, where he quickly became known for his daring exploits and charisma, which helped him attract a loyal crew, unlike Charles Vane over there. Rackham and his crew primarily operated in the Caribbean, raiding merchant ships and coastal towns. His tactics often included ambushing ships and taking prisoners, where he would demand ransom for their release. Notably, he had two female pirates in his crew, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, both of whom became famous in their own right. And they also enjoyed drinking a lot, because apparently they drank so much that his crew even became notorious for heavy drinking. Rackham's piracy came to an end in 1720, where he was captured by the British Navy near Jamaica. His trial was swift, and he was found guilty of piracy and was hanged on November 18th, 1720. So let me get this straight, he had multiple women, liked to drink, and was extremely violent. Is this my dad? Number 5. Ching Shi Also known as the Dragon Lady of the South China Seas, was born around 1775 in Guangdong, China. She began her life as a sex worker in Canton and decided that she didn't want to be the one getting pounded, she wanted to do the pounding. So in 1801, she married the pirate Chang I, leader of a powerful fleet. Man, what is up with famous and powerful people marrying ex-strippers and hookers? I just don't get it. Anyway, after his death in 1807, she took command and expanded the fleet, uniting various pirate crews under the Red Flag Fleet, making it one of the most formidable pirate organizations of the time. She was like a pirate Mulan, except she didn't cross-dress, and Mulan wasn't for the streets, and they are nothing alike. And yes, I only made this comparison because they are both Chinese women. Ching Shi's leadership was marked by strict discipline and a code of conduct that enforced rules about the treatment of prisoners and the fair distribution of loot. Lame! Where's the greed and the selfishness? I swear, female protagonists always have something to prove. Her fleet conducted numerous raids along the Chinese coast and in the South Chinese Sea, targeting merchant ships and coastal towns. Known for her ruthless tactics, she instilled fear through executions and the destruction of settlements that resisted her. Okay. Never mind, that's where the greed and selfishness is. But in 1810, facing increasing pressure from the Qing government and the British Navy, Qing Shi negotiated a deal to surrender her fleet in exchange for amnesty. And after retiring, she settled in Guangdong, opened a gambling house, and lived a relatively peaceful life until her death in 1844 at the age of 69. Ironic, I know, started off by 69ing and ended off on 69. Number 4. William Kidd 
Born around 1654 in Dundee, Scotland, unsurprisingly he began his career as a privateer, working for the British government to capture enemy ships during conflicts, which allowed him to legally plunder for profit. In 1695, Kidd was commissioned as a privateer to hunt pirates in the Indian Ocean. However, his mission took a dark turn when he and his crew turned to piracy themselves, driven by the hardships of sea life and the sexiness of wealth. Kidd's ship, the Adventure Galley, became notorious for its aggressive tactics. As a pirate, Kidd captured several vessels and amassed significant wealth, with his ability to target merchant ships with ruthless efficiency. Where his most infamous act was the attack on the Kadov merchant, a ship carrying valuable cargo. This act was seen as a betrayal of his privateer commission and contributed to his notoriety. But Kidd's downfall began when he returned to America in 1699, where he was arrested and charged with piracy. He was tried in England in 1701 and found guilty on May 23, 1701, where he was hung in London. Yes, this is who Eustace Kidd is based off in One Piece. Number 3. Henry Morgan Henry Morgan was a Welsh privateer born around 1635 in Lynn Rumney, Wales. Raised in a modest family, he was likely influenced by the maritime culture surrounding him, so what I'm saying is that he's like the suburban kids that try to start a rap career. Little is known about his early life, but he may have been a farmer before joining the sea, but his cunning and leadership skills quickly earned him a reputation as one of the most feared privateers of his time. But as a pirate, him and his crews attacked Spanish settlements and ships, looting treasures and goods. Where Morgan led several successful raids including the notorious sack of Panama in 1671, which helped him become known for his strategic use of surprise and deception, where he often launched attacks at dawn or in the dead of night. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not all from our good friend Morgan, because his crew became well known for their violent tactics, like torturing captives to extract information about treasure. And after all the evil he did in 1674, Morgan was appointed Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica, effectively ending his pirate career. But not only that, he was knighted and became a respected member of society. Morgan died on August 25th, 1688 from natural causes and was buried in Port Royal, Jamaica. How did he get away with all of this? Number 2. Francois Le Lune Born around 1635 in France, emerged as one of the Caribbean's most notorious pirates after turning into piracy in the 1660s. After getting shipwrecked, Francois avoided capture from the Spanish by covering himself in blood and sand while playing possum. And it was with that event that he became extremely racist towards the Spanish. Since the Spanish soldiers that found the shipwreck killed all the other remaining survivors. Hey, he God. later joined a group of buccaneers and quickly gained a reputation for his ruthless tactics, becoming captain of his own ship. Francois was known for his cunning and brutal raids, pillaging towns and capturing Spanish ships while inflicting extreme violence on captives. And in one case, he held up a Spanish town for ransom, then captured the Spanish soldiers who were sent to stop him. He beheaded all but one of the Spanish rescuers, who he sent to give a message to the governor of Havana, and it said, I shall never henceforth give quarter to any Spaniard whatsoever. His infamous cruelty included torturing enemies and leading massacres, earning him a fearsome reputation. And when he raided San Pedro, he captured Spanish soldiers and tortured one of them by cutting open his chest and pulling out his heart. And I guess he was hella hungry because he ate the heart, but everyone knows that karma is in fact a female dog. Because his pirate career ended around 1671 when he was reportedly captured by indigenous people near Panama, with accounts suggesting he was killed and cannibalized. Number 1. Blackbeard who else could have been? And yes, the real Blackbeard is the inspiration of Whitebeard and Blackbeard in One Piece because his name Edward Teach would be used for both of the One Piece characters. Born around 1680 in Bristol, England, became one of history's most infamous pirates. His origins are somewhat unclear, but he likely started as a sailor in the British Navy before transitioning to privateering during the War of Spanish Succession. This experience gave him the skills and connections needed to become a pirate. Edward Teach turned to piracy in the early 1710s, teaming up with the Captain Benjamin Hornigold. And after Hornigold retired, Teach took command of a captured ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, and began his notorious career. His fearsome image, complete with slow-burning fuses in his beard, which gave him max levels of aura and struck terror into the hearts of sailors and merchants. 
As a pirate, Blackbeard primarily targeted merchant vessels along the American colonies and the West Indies. He was known for his audacious attacks where his crew engaged in looting and plundering, seizing gold, <laughs> silver, and other valuable cargo as any good pirate would. Some of Blackbeard's most infamous actions include blockading the port of Charleston, South Carolina in May 1718, capturing several ships and holding their crews for ransom. He also tortured captives and sometimes executed those who resisted. Blackbeard's piracy came to an end on November 22, 1718 when he was killed in a fierce battle with British naval forces led by Lieutenant Robert Maynard off the coast of South Carolina, where after the brutal battle, Blackbeard sustained multiple gunshot wounds and cuts before finally succumbing. His head was later severed and hung from the bowsprit of Maynard's ship as a grim trophy and warning to other pirates. If you couldn't guess, I got this idea from watching One Piece. So, thank you, Oda, and seeing how most of these pirates died in a not-so-flattery way, I think I will keep my pirating to movies. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe, Poppy, and I will see you in another episode.